right now? You see yeah, it? You can see it. All right. Okay. So, hello. We are group 17 of the AI for Good hackathon theme. And this is the group of people that have worked together to create Headpiece, an app designed for people with antisocial personality disorder. But before we tell you what Headpiece does, it's important to take a look at who our users are, as they are the most important reason of why this idea even exists in the first place. Generally characterized as possessing a lack of empathy and disregarding the rights of others, antisocial personality disorder is a psychological disorder that affects a significant percentage of the US population. Symptoms of this disorder include heightened aggression towards strangers and friends, disregard for societal rules, and a far greater risk of criminal activity. Someone with antisocial personality disorder is less likely to confine to the traditional norms of morality within their culture, leading to potentially disruptive behavior that infringes on other people's rights. This, along with other factors, leads to people with antisocial personality disorder being sent to prison at a far greater rate than individuals without this disorder. For context, there are estimates of up to 64% of prison populations being made up of people with antisocial personality disorder when they make up 3.5% of the general population. Suffice to say, people with antisocial personality disorder have a difficult time integrating into society. Now, we'd like to get along to what we are trying to do to address this. Our main idea with using Headpiece would be making an app that allows users to parse and replace words when texting to others. Through training this AI, we can help them identify words or phrases that might come across as selfish or uncaring. We would like to emphasize that these are only suggestions, as the user can undo them or request alternate suggestions to allow them to maintain their identity online instead of having it being replaced by the AI's word generation. By doing so, we hope to not only aid their day-to-day -day communication with friends and family, but cultivate new relationships and perhaps gain a better understanding of the value of empathy. Here are a couple examples of how the app might work. Do keep in mind that this, these are simple examples for the sake of demonstration. There are a lot of complexities with antisocial personality disorder, so the app will make sure to not just address cold and uncaring speech, but also manipulative speech. The first example here includes a suggestion change from I don't care to congratulations when responding to news of a friend's promotion. The second, remolls, the second involves removing an additive line that would have otherwise been used to manipulate this friend into paying the user. Our AI wouldn't simply be a one note replace and reframe machine either. By storing different words, we can fine tune suggestions to be more favorable to each user to maintain an important sense of individuality. Adapting each user's library of recommended phrases and words when dealing with repeated uses of manipulative speech and, or uncaring words will allow the AI to work with the user rather than working against the user. There are a handful of current treatments that exist to treat per antisocial personality disorder with drugs such as antipsychotics and mood stabilizers being a common solution. So why are we different? On one hand, drugs are not perfect as the reliance on medication can lead to tolerance and dependence. These medications are not necessarily addictive, but due to the body's adaptive nature, it can get used to the presence of these drugs and change accordingly, reducing the effectiveness of each individual dose and leading to your body becoming physiologically dependent on the product. This combined with a handful of side effects like nausea and insomnia, makes them unideal for long-term treatment. Cognitive behavioral therapy, on the other hand, is a more long-term approach that aids with reshaping the way someone thinks to help change their behaviors, leading to a more natural process. However, this works most effectively when working directly with a therapist in their office, which won't always be the case. With Headpiece, we hope to add an additional layer to cognitive behavioral therapy that can aid people with antisocial personality disorder outside of the therapist's office, not just inside. Working with therapists is going to be crucial to making this app work. Not only will therapist expertise allow us to fine tune the app and make changes in regards to individual clients, but their aid will also allow us to get a more thorough understanding of antisocial personality disorder as a whole. We are by no means experts on the disorder, so we are not afraid to seek more information from professionals in the field. We can use their aid to help AI create appropriate responses and adapt the program's usage to each individual client. Working with therapists will also tackle another major problem with our users, namely the fact that people with antisocial personality disorder may not seek aid themselves. By working with this therapist network, 
we can dramatically increase our chances of getting the app to those who need it. And I know you've all been waiting for this, so here it is. It would also be impossible to incorporate headpiece into the metaverse as the communication based focus we have for the app would work well to aid people with antisocial personality disorder inside of the metaverse. Through text to speak technology, we could provide alternate phrases and vocalize them for the user, or if the user is not comfortable with text to speech, they could also instead use real time suggestions to allow for a more natural and individualized process. And that's all. Thank you for coming to our presentation about headpiece. Thank you, Robert and Group 17 and um, jury panelists. We have one minute for any questions or comments. Can you talk a little bit more about the business viability? So the business viability would be focused on advertising this to the therapist network, and we would use these therapists to help provide that product, uh, the app, to the users, which are the people with antisocial personality disorder. And the focus would be making sure that the therapists are probably just as important as the AI in making this thing work, because it, we would be relying on them to help us a lot with making sure we can improve our product for each user and make sure that their satisfaction with the product and reasonable prices prices are achieved. So it's a complementary product to cognitive behavior therapy, specifically therapists. Yes. And then using that feedback loop to be able to change behavior. Yes. Thank you, Six. Yeah. Um, oh, sorry, let's go ahead. No, I was just going to say I had a comment. Uh, it was more of a you know great presentation, great delivery. Um, my my only comment was early on in the the presentation you mentioned a correlation between uh, behaviors and incarceration, and it it, it led to an, an idea that this may be helping to improve that number. I would just caution you because the rest of the presentation really didn't align to that. So it, it, if my expectations were set on that, um, I don't think that they were met. You see what I'm saying? Because oh, it was yeah, more I understand about, what you're saying. We it was more about how, yeah, go ahead. Oh, we were, with the presentation, we were mainly trying to make sure that the people with antisocial personality disorder were incorporated into society better rather than having their behavior and their actions and perhaps their words leading to them ending up in prison due to their lack of empathy and understanding of other people's rights. Makes sense. Great job. Thanks, Robert. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Great job, Group 17. Um, moving on, Group 18. I assume, Brayden, because you came on camera, you are Group 18. Oh, no. OK. Is Group 18 here? <laughs> yes, we are, Nandita. OK, perfect. Go ahead. All right, let me go ahead and share.